So the first character, another characteristic is unicellular. These are organisms that are made up of one single cell. So the set, unicellular organisms usually consist of bacteria, archaea, protozoa, and algae. This one is going to be your most common one, is bacteria. These can cause illnesses. They actually, you have more bacteria in and on your body than you have cells of your body. So they can actually form a protective barrier. They can help you digest your food. They can break down, they can be decomposers and break down other dead organisms. Archaea, archaea live in some pretty unique situations. They live in like hot springs or really, really uninhabitable environments for a lot of other organisms. Protozoa, protozoa are actually a eukaryote when we talked about, if you remember back when we talked about cells, there's prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Protozoa are eukaryotic, they have a nucleus in them. An algae, algae is like a plant. Plants, they are able to produce their own food. Out of these, this one here is going to be autotroph. Most of these others here are going to be heterotroph. So, some are prokaryotic, some eukaryotic, with or without a nucleus in their cells. The next characteristic is multicellular. If we're going to have unicellular, the opposite of that is going to be multicellular, consisting of many cells. So long as it has more than one, it is multicellular. These are complex organisms, and most of them can be seen with the naked eye. You can, you can visually observe all of these. Not all of them. Um, there are certain bugs, like mites. Mites, actually, they can live on other bugs. They are extremely small. They get inside pets' ears and cause irritation there. But for the most part, you can see a lot of the multicellular organisms that are out there. Cells become specialized, such as nerve cells, muscle cells, brain cells, etc. You have a lot of different cells inside your body, and with that, you can they do different things. You have cells that make up your eyes that makes it so that you can see. Those are going to be different than your fingernails, which are going to be different than your bones, which are going to be different than your skin and, and your brain cells and nerve cells and all these different things. You have lots of different variation within your cells inside your body, which makes it so you can do multiple different things and makes these organisms far more complex. So that's going to be one of the first ways that we actually break down organisms into different groups. All of these things are multicellular. So you can figure that out pretty easily where it's sitting. Prokaryotic. Prokaryotic are microscopic, and they're also going to have no, nuclei, no membrane bound nucleus. No organelles. They are basically just a cell membrane with a bunch of DNA in it. They are able to reproduce very rapidly. They are going to be unicellular, meaning even though these ones here are all grouped together, each one of these individually is going to be its own cell, its own organism. They are primitive, meaning they are very basic. They, they're not very complex. So some examples are, are bacteria and cyanobacteria. Whereas eukaryotes, eukaryotes are membrane-bound nucleus, would have a membrane-bound nucleus, which contains genetic material. Right in here, that's the nucleus. We talked about this when we talked about parts of the cell. They have organelles, such as our mitochondria right here and our endoplasmic reticulum right here, found in multicellular organisms. They can also be single cellular, but this is where we're looking mostly for them is multicellular. And they are gonna be far more advanced as far as the complexity of them. They can do a lot more things than you can with the others. And some examples is all the plants and animals, funguses, protozoa, Basically, most everything that you can see that's an organism is going to be considered eukaryotic.